coming at you with another Comic Cat Creation sewing tutorial and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make this really fun and flirty and sassy skater dress. It features a great sweetheart neckline as well as a full circle skirt which is perfect for twirling and dancing and just having lots of fun in. So I hope you enjoy the tutorial and make sure to hit that subscribe button now so you don't miss out on any more videos. We're starting the tutorial by making our circle skirt pattern, so begin by measuring your waist where you want the skirt to sit, and mine's 32 inches. Get a large piece of paper or tape some together like I am, and now we have to figure out the radius of our waist by using this fancy formula here, but don't even worry about it if you're as scared of math as I am. All you need to do is take your waist measurement and divide it by 6.28 to get the radius. It's that simple. So I divide my waist, 32, by 6.28, and it rounds up to be about 5.1 inches. Measure and mark the number you get for your radius on the edges of a corner of your paper and then swivel the tape measure from the corner and continue marking that number until you can connect the marks into a quarter circle. Add more marks a half inch inside the curve to create a seam allowance and then cut away the inside paper using paper scissors, not good fabric scissors, and then discard that area. To create your skirt's bottom edge, add one inch to your desired skirt length and then measure and mark that distance from the curved waist and then cut it out to finish your pattern. We're using stretch knit fabrics for the project and the amount of fabric really depends on your skirt's length, but the great thing about most knit fabrics is that they're usually wide enough to cut a whole circle skirt without any seams, which is what we're doing here. I made a mistake and didn't record cutting out my actual skirt, which is pictured here, so I'm going to show you exactly what to do with another piece of fabric. Fold a section of your fabric over and do your best to smooth it out and keep the stripes even. Now fold the fabric in half again the opposite way, and again make sure it's smoothed out. Since this is a different type of fabric, the wrinkles were much harder to get out than the smooth, stretchy fabric you should use, but you get the idea. Lay your circle skirt pattern with the straight edges lining up to the folded edges of the fabric, and you'd simply pin this in place and cut it out along the curved edges. Now you'll have this shape, which is my actual skirt with the smooth, stretchy fabric, and it unfolds into a beautiful full circle skirt. Set that aside and grab your bodice fabric, which is also a smooth stretch knit fabric. Fold a portion of your fabric over and make sure that it stretches in the direction of the arrows. Grab a well-fitting tank top for our bodice template and we're going to fold it up to get a guide to cut our fabric. So fold the bottom up to where your natural waist is and fold those edges out of the way. Then fold the straps down most of the way and you'll see that this leaves a semi-sweetheart shaped top. Now fold it in half and this will be our guide. Lay the center fold of your tank top onto the fold of your fabric and pin it down. We're using this shape as a general guide for the sweetheart shape, so cut around the top just like I am, making sure the bust line is curved and slopes gently to the side. This isn't an exact science, just try to cut a shape similar to mine and also make sure to cut at least a half inch extra on all sides for seam allowance. Cut a second identical bodice front and one will be the lining and the other the outer bodice front. Fold another portion of your bodice fabric over, again making sure it stretches this way. I know the black fabric makes this hard to see, but fold one of your bodice fronts in half and pin it down onto the fold of your fabric, only instead of pinning the curved sweetheart part down, you're actually going to fold it down out of the way to create a straight edge. Cut around that rectangular shape exactly to create the back bodice piece, which will be the same size as the front, only it'll be missing the curved bust line. Then cut a second lining piece. With right sides facing together, lay a back bodice piece onto a front piece and pin and sew along the side seams using a ballpoint needle and one of your machine's stretch or zigzag stitches. Using a stretch or a zigzag stitch prevents stitches from popping when stretched. Now try the top on, and as you see mine is too big and too long, but this is an easy fix. Simply try the top on inside out and pin the sides so that the bodice fits perfectly. Take it off and use chalk to draw a line where you pinned, which will show you where you need to sew, and then trim the edge outside the line to allow for seam allowance. Fold the top in half and trim exactly the same on the other side, and since mine was too long I also trimmed the bottom edge so that it would hit more at my natural waist. Then just pin and sew the sides, just like before, and you'll have a perfect fit. While it's on, measure from the top edge of the back to the front where you want your straps to sit and jot that number down for later. Mine's 15 and a half inches. If you altered your bodice like I did, trim down the other set of front and back pieces to match the fitted set. Now everyone should sew them together and you'll have two sets of bodices, one for the lining and one for the outside. 
Add one inch to the measurement you wrote down earlier for strap length and cut two strips that measure that number wide by two and a half inches tall. Fold the strips in half and sew across the long edge using a quarter inch or less for seam allowance to reduce bulk, then use a safety pin to turn the straps right side out. Angle the seam on the back so that you'll have a neat front side to the strap. Working on the bodice you want to use for the lining, make even marks where you want to position the center of the straps on the front and back. I marked mine 4 inches in from the sides on the front and about 5 inches on the back, but obviously mark with your own measurements where you want the straps to lay. And also make marks on both sides of the fabric just so you can see them easily. Turn the lining right side out and place it so the back is facing up. Lay one of your straps centered on top of the marking, making sure that the seam side of the strap is facing down against the lining, meaning the neat, pretty side of the strap is facing upward, and pin it into place. Repeat with the other strap, again making sure the seam side is facing down. Flip the lining so that the front sweetheart side is facing up now. Bring one of the straps from the back around the bottom of the bodice and to the front, and be careful to make sure that the strap doesn't twist at all, so basically the seam side of the strap will be facing toward the bodice the whole time as you bring it around. Lay the end of the strap onto the front marking so that you're pinning the seam side against the lining fabric and the nice side of the strap is still facing up, and then repeat this with the other strap. Not twisting the strap will make sure it lays flat on your shoulder when you wear it. Both straps should now be pinned on the front and back and wrapped around the bodice, with the seam sides facing in toward the lining the whole time. I know it looks funny now, but this will make sure they come out perfectly in the end. Now grab your outer bodice piece, which needs to be turned inside out, and slide it around the lining, which is still right side out, and line up all the edges. Match up and pin the side seams together at the top of the bodice. Now that the side seams are pinned, match up the center V of the bodices and pin them together too. Then continue pinning all along the curved bust line to attach the layers. Keep the straps pinned to the lining exactly as they were, so now they'll just be sandwiched between the lining and outer layers. Flip the bodice over and pin the back together too, again keeping the straps in the same position. Stitch along the entire top of the bodice to attach the lining, outer fabric, and straps together. Sew with a stretch stitch and a half inch seam allowance, and if your machine has it, I definitely recommend using the straight stretch stitch for this because having the narrow lines of stitching will make the next step a bit easier. Trim your seam allowance down to about a quarter inch before the next step. Pull the bodices apart to separate them, and here my lining is on the right and the outer fabric is on the left. Then fold the seam allowance over toward the lining and stitch them together, sewing pretty close to the original stitching. As you sew, keep your lining and seam allowance to the right side and your outer fabric and your straps out of the way to the left, and then you're going to stitch the seam allowance to the lining all the way around the bodice, and I recommend using the same straight stretch stitch for this if you have it because it makes it easy to sew in a straight line. When you get to the curved areas of the bust line, just sew slowly and carefully, and you'll see that I raise the presser foot and adjust the fabric often to make sure the outer fabric is out of the way, since you only want to be sewing the lining and seam allowance together, not the outer fabric or straps. I've completed the understitching here, and this easy step will seriously make the dress look way nicer when you wear it. Once you turn the bodice right side out, you can see that the top edges look really neat and clean thanks to that understitching. Thread a needle with matching thread and knot it so that the thread is doubled, and to create a more detailed, beautiful gathered neckline, fold the fabric in the center back and forth a few times to gather it together. Insert the needle up from the lining side to hide the knot, and then stitch up and down through the gathers several times to secure the fabric. Try to make the visible stitches as small as possible so that they won't be seen. Bring your final stitch to the lining side and knot it by bringing the needle through the previous stitches a couple of times and then bringing it through the loop that you create when you do that. I just love the gathered detail that this makes. Pin together the bottom side seams of the bodice to keep them together and also measure and place pins to mark the center front and center back of the bodice's waistline. Mark with pins equally spaced where you want the center front, center back, and sides of the skirt to be. With your skirt turned inside out and your bodice turned right side out, slide your bodice inside the skirt, line up the waistlines, and match up and pin the center fronts, center backs, and sides together.
Continue pinning in smaller increments all around the waist, and if the waists of both aren't exactly the same size like mine, just stretch the sections of fabric between the pins to be even, and then pin again in smaller increments while the fabric is stretched. This will make sure that even though the fabrics aren't the same size, the waist will still be gathered evenly, and there won't be one section with way too much fabric that looks weird. Sew the waist together with a stretch or zigzag stitch, and as you sew, use both hands to stretch each section of fabric between the pins out evenly and sew that section, then remove the next pin, stretch, and sew that section, adjusting the fabric as necessary as you go. Your skirt and bodice should now be neatly attached. Finally, we need to hem the skirt, so fold the bottom edge over toward the wrong side of the fabric about a quarter of an inch once, then fold it again and pin it into place, and then pin a few inches of the hemline in this way. I chose to hem with this decorative stretch stitch here in blue to give the hem some flair, but you can choose whatever stitch you prefer. Stitch the section of hem you pin down, and then fold and sew the rest of the hemline in place as you go. Since circle skirt hems are so wide, folding the hem as you go is way quicker than pinning it all first, so just get in a groove of sewing a few inches, folding the hem, and sewing some more until your skirt is finished. I know this was a long tutorial, but all your hard work will be worth it when you wear the dress. Thanks for watching and see y'all soon. Bye!